possible. So, who wouldn't be happy? Like, since, for instance, I've just mentioned the sisters. If a sister was familiar of the greatness of Rasulullah if she knew what the Prophet did for the sisters, how Rasulullah is a mercy. You know, in, in, in our time, people think that Islam is a religion that oppresses women. You know, this is a big accusation against Islam and against the Prophet And we, we can't blame these people. We are to blame ourselves because we have not, we have failed to introduce Rasulullah to these people. So Rasulullah, if a sister was to know that the Prophet gave her the right to live, she would never say that I will not celebrate the birth of Rasulullah Do you know what the Prophet did for sisters, for women? You know, if you study the history, the, the pre-Islamic history, the uh, Babylonian civilization, if you study their history, women didn't have the right to live. Do you know that if a husband, if a man was to murder someone, instead of that man, they would put his wife to death. And he had the right to do that. If you study the Greek civilization, in the Greek civilization, a woman was considered to be an evil being. Cause of evil and misfortune. This was before the, the, the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the, the Roman civilization, if a man wanted to murder a woman, he had the right, he had the legal right to murder a woman, his wife. He had the, legally, it was permissible for him, allowed for him to take the life of his wife. This was before Islam. This was before the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And in the Egyptian civilization, it was known that, that women, they were known to be a symbol of, of Satan. And in the Arab civilization, we know that daughters were, were buried alive. There was a companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa There is something that when I think about it, I laugh so much that I can't control my laughter. And then there is another thing. When I think about it, when I remember it, I cry so much, but I can't control my tears. The Prophet sallallahu said, what is that? He said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the time of jahiliyyah, in the time of ignorance, there was a time when once I, I went on a journey, and I decided to take my God with me, my ma'bud with me, the idol that I used to worship. And he said, the, the idol that I carried it, and it was very heavy. And I thought that I will die under the burden of my ma'bud if I carry this ma'bud with me. So he decided to create another ma'bud. He said, I got together some, some flowers, some atta, and he said, then I made uh, uh, the, 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 the idol. And he said, then I made the idol with atta, and then I, I, I weighed it, and it was a lot lighter. And I decided I'll take the, the ma'bud with me. So I took the ma'bud with me on the journey, and then wherever I would stop, I would worship the ma'bud, I would worship my God. And then he said that the food that I had taken with me, it had finished. And then for some days I became very patient and I did sabr, but then I lost patience, I lost sabr. And then one day I felt so hungry that I just prepared that butter and I made some khubz with it, some bread with it, and I started to eat it. And he said, oh God, if you're not going to help me now, then when will you help me? The companion said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that this, is, this was the state of our ignorance, this is how ignorant we were. He said, when I remember, when I think about that, I can't stop laughing. I cannot stop laughing. I can't control my laughter when I think about it. This is how ignorant we were. And there's one thing when I think about that, I can't stop crying. The Prophet wasallam said, what is that? He said, Ya Rasulullah wasallam in the time of ignorance, in the time of jahiliyyah, there was a time when I went out from my, from my place and my wife was, was pregnant. And you know the, the kind of cultural pressure that we had at that time about having daughters. He said, I traveled from my city to another city. I went on a journey. And when I came back, when I left, my wife was pregnant. And when I came back, my wife told me that I had a daughter. There are three narrations on this. One narration is that she, had, uh, she didn't tell him at first. But later on, she, uh, she told him. And he said, when I saw my daughter, she came running to me and she embraced me. She hugged me and she expressed a lot of love for me. And he said, I, felt, I fell in love with her. I, had, I was attached to my, my daughter. But the pressure of the community was so much 
I thought that she would bring shame to me, to my ancestors and to my family. This is what they thought about daughters. And he said that my wife had this fear as well, that one day I may take her life. I may kill her, I may murder her, I may bury her alive. That's how they treated the daughters. He, he said that but one day, the, the culture that we were in, the, the, the pressure that I had, he said I couldn't take it anymore. And she was growing old and she, she was close to uh, the age of maturity. And she said that one, he said one day, I just told my wife, I said, give her some good clothing, dress her up and comb her hair and I'm taking her out for a party. And he said, my wife knew that she suspected me. She had this shock that, that I'm about to do what the Arabs do at that time. He said that I told my wife and he said, but she couldn't do anything. She was crying. He said, my wife was crying and she was combing her hair and she, she dressed her up in good clothing and new kapade. And he said that when she was crying, my daughter asked my wife, she asked, mother, why are you crying? And the mother couldn't inform her. She couldn't tell her. And she had a lot of love. And she said, look, daddy's taking me out today. This is the first time my father is taking me out. You should be happy. And he said that then after that, I took her with me. And before I, I, I left from there, he said, my wife said to me, Ya Rajul, la tudayya al-amana. Ya Rajul, la tudayya al-amana. Do not lose the trust. Do not lose the trust. Meaning she's amana. She's amana. Do not lose the trust. He said, I had a lot of love for her, but I took her with me. He said that I took her and while we were going towards the desert, he said, I went there and she was talking to, to her father. The two, the three narrations on this, he said, she was constantly asking me, where are we going? Where are we going, O oh father? And then the father said that I'm taking you somewhere. And then the father takes her to a place and he says that I dug up the, in the desert, I disintegrated the zameen. And then after that, she was helping her father. She was helping her father. And the father, according to one narration, he, he was sweating. And she was feeling sorry for her father, that the father is tired, so she would help her father. Allahu Akbar Kabira. And then he said that I became so ruthless, so stone-hearted, that I picked her up and I threw her in the ditch. I threw her in the ditch in that cover. And she started to scream. She started to cry. Oh, father, Baba, what are you doing? Oh, father, what are you doing? What are you doing to me? We were supposed to go for a party, for a celebration, according to one narration, to a relative's wedding. What are you doing, oh, father? He said that I had love for her, but I couldn't do anything. And then, according to uh, another uh, narration, the father had, he says that I had some dust on my beard, and she was in the ditch, and she was cleaning the dust. She was cleaning my face out of love. And he said, but I became so ruthless that I buried her and then gradually. And then one thing that she said, one thing that she said, she said, what she heard from her mother, what the mother said, La tudayyil amana, la tudayyil amana. Ya Rajul, she said, Baba, oh father, oh father, remember what my mother said? Do not lose the trust. This amana, do not lose the trust. He said, nothing affected me. And then gradually, her tiny voice, I couldn't hear it anymore. And then she passed away. He says, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Whenever I think about that, he says, at night I can't go to sleep because I hear her screaming, Baba, Baba, oh Father, oh Father, la tudayyil amana. He said, this is what I did in the time of jahiliyyah. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One thing makes me laugh and I can't control my laughter. And this is something that makes me cry and I can't control my tears. Another narration, the father threw his daughter in a well. And she kept calling, she kept saying that do not do this, O oh father. And in one narration, a father buried his daughter alive and she said, do not tell my mother, do not tell my mother, tell my mother that you took me to a qabila, to a tribe, and you left me there because she won't be able to bear this. The Prophet wasallam said, in one incident, the Prophet ﷺ was sitting next to Sayyidatuna Fatima to Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa daughter. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa started to cry. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa started to shed tears. And the Prophet ﷺ embraced Fatima to Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha and gave her love. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said to the man, If Allah permitted me, if my Lord permitted me, if Allah gave me izan for what you people did, if I was permitted to take revenge and to punish you for what you did before you became Muslims, you would have been the first one that I, had, I would take a, a revenge against. I would punish you. You would be the first one to be punished. 
This is what was happening to the daughters. And what did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa do? What did he give to women? Allahu Akbar Kabira. You know, there's one incident where, where three brothers, three brothers sold their mother in the market for 900 dirhams. 900 dirhams. This is what was happening in the, uh, the, the, the Arab civilization. For 900 dirhams, they actually sold their mother. And Rahmatullil Alameen, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he do? He made people, the same Bedouins, the same ruthless people, he made them believe that Jannah is at your mother's feet. And this wasn't just a saying, this, they actually believed in that. The companions believed in that. This is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam totally transmogrified the, 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 the values of humanity. The, 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 he changed the understanding about humanity. They didn't know what humanity was. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam transformed their life. Just take note, take a couple of hadiths. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this is something in our community, we have this problem. You have, you know, people give preference to sons upon daughters. And they have this inferiority complex. A lot of people in our community, if they have daughters and if they don't have sons, listen to what the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa has to say about the maqam of daughters. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever was given any female children and took good care of them, they will be a shield for him from the fire of hell. And that is the maqam of the daughter. That's a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih al-Muslim. Another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever has three daughters and takes good care of them and is merciful with them, he deserves nothing less than Jannah. He deserves nothing less than Jannah. A companion said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what if someone has two daughters? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he deserves nothing less than Jannah. If he, if he raises his daughters with mahabba, provide for her. This is a hadith in Mustadrak of Imam Hakim. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever takes care of two young girls, and this can be sisters, and it can also be daughters. Whoever takes care of two young girls, until they reach maturity, he will come on the day of judgment with me like this. How? The Prophet ﷺ, he joined his two fingers, he said like this. Allah. 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 Do you want to be with the Prophet ﷺ in the hereafter? Huh? We all say that, don't we? If only we are raised with the beloved of Allah. Rasulullah said, if you look after your two sisters or two daughters, you will be raised with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You will be with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment. Allah. 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 Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do not curse your daughters. Don't you see that I am the one with daughters? Don't curse your daughters. Don't you see I am the one with daughters? Allah said, they, they are sympathizers. Daughters are sympathizers. Daughters are most loving. You can trust your daughters. There are many things in which you may not trust your sons, but you can trust your daughters. Rasulullah said that they have immense love and daughters are sympathizers. The mafhum, the, the meaning derived from the hadith of Rasulullah. So tell me, brothers, tell me, if today someone says to a sister, we will not commemorate the mawlid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What will she say? She will say, go away. He is the Prophet of Allah who gave me the right to live. Why would I listen to him? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gave sisters huh? spiritual rights, economic rights, social rights, legal rights are given, educational rights are given to sisters by who? By Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was introduced by the Prophet so This is a big subject, we can talk about that, but I will come back to the main thing, the, the, the subject